Um, boom, 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 boom. All the things. And it was so dark and really cool in here. That was really cool. You said you weren't going to steal the thunder. You lied. Just <laughs> FYI. All I'm like is, oh, does anything actually matter? But <laughs> so, Hannah Berry, <laughs> thanks for coming, everybody. Um, I wanted to start out just talking about like my personal life a little bit. So I grew up in Grand Rapids area. I'm from Lowell, but um, grew up in several different schools within Grand Rapids. So got to meet a lot of people. Um, I worked at the Winchester. That's like my claim to fame in Grand Rapids. So if I served you a Negroni, you're welcome. Um, but yeah, so that was a huge stepping, uh, really big stepping portion of my life. I went to Kendall for our education after having a kid at the age of 20. So. I just had a very um, easy time navigating that life in Grand Rapids because of the foundation of community. So community drives everything, and that is huge. So oddly enough, A.B. was one of my neighbors in Elder Heights. And um, when I worked at the Winchester, he would say, well, why, why are you working at the Winchester? Why do you keep working here? And I'm like, you make really good money. It's fun. You know, I don't really know what I want to do in a school. And he said, well, if you want to make art, go make art. So he and I had a show uh, back in like 2015. So I just made a lot of art for the show and it was like, okay, I'm gonna sell art at the show with AB, who's a DJ, who's cool. This is gonna be cool. So, and honestly, like that's where my art started like really moving forward. So being a 20 year old parent um, in Grand Rapids is obviously a little bit difficult as well, just because of how you're viewed societally uh, as the norms. So when I talk about that, um, and getting support from certain people, it's like a real support, you know? It's not just like, oh, hey, you're my bud. It's, you know, they're telling me to move forward and keep going. So as an artist working at the Winchester, I had lots of friends, lots of connections there. Um, if you think about like all the new development in Grand Rapids, Winchester was like the starting point in East Town for people to go and hang out and grab drinks. So from Studio C being built, you know, those are all people that I've known from working there. So getting those connections, being with the people that work there, the hundreds of people that you, that go through a restaurant, you build really, really great connections. So through those connections, I got Lions and Rabbits. Lions and Rabbits um, was this building. This was the St. Vincent de Paul's thrift store before it was Lions and Rabbits. The building owner was an old Winchester regular, his name's Sean, and he, was gonna convert it into a bar. And he had some problems with the building and just it being an old building, working with the city, zoning, you know, compliances, there's a lot of things that go into this that I had no idea or I wouldn't be a building owner. And I, uh, he was like, well, do you wanna use it as a studio space after he tried and tried and tried to make it a bar? I was like, well, it's way too big to be a studio. I don't know how we would fund a studio in there. so." What do you want to do? He's like, you pay the mortgage, you help fix up the building, we'll figure it out. Fast forward, he got a new job. He moved um, to Nashville during this time period. I was getting married, I was selling my house, I was moving into another house, I have student loan debt, you know, all these things. What do you want to do? We can have a third party buy the building, or you guys can buy the building. So, didn't pay off your student loans, bought the building. <laughs> so that's where we're at. So uh, during the process, the first day that I worked on this building, uh, those windows that are, they're now like giant windows. So the first day that I was there, there were no windows in there. He had just poured the floor, but none of like the heating, cooling, lighting, none of that was done. Um, so from July, when I quit the Winchester to October, I worked on this building pretty much day in, day out. This building is also in Creston. Creston is very well known if you think about Creston, you think of Creston Brewery, right? So we're south of Creston Brewery, a little bit closer to um, Graydon's Crossings area. It's division, where division merges into Plainfield. In that area, there is a lot of crime. Uh, Page Street is actually known in Grand Rapids for being one of the highest domestic violence streets. So in that street corner is Page. So there have been some hurdles going through that, but uh, the community of people that are in that area know that we just care only about the community. So the small little things, you know, they're just like tipping points, but being able to have an art gallery community center in this neighborhood 
creates vibrancy in this neighborhood. So when you think of Creston, don't think of Creston Brewery. Think of a little bit down, where there's more abandoned buildings. Um, or like a muffler man. Valvoline, all my friends. They're all nice. They all have like things that I don't have that I can borrow from them. But, so yeah, that's Chris. He's over there too. He's my husband. So, now we have this dreamland. Fast forward. When I opened the gallery, I said, okay, I'm gonna get all my local artist friends to hang artwork here, because I hang artwork in the Winchester, and it will be easy. No, they're not gonna pay for wall space. No, they're not gonna do commission. We're just gonna have a collective. Then I started talking to people. You know, I'm talking to collectives, and I'm talking to other business owners. Tammy Vandenberg, who owns Pyramid Scheme. Hey, how do you do things? Everyone is giving me completely different advice, but it's all real advice. So just like being raw and like learning from other people was the only way that we could do this. Um, and Art Prize, Art Prize came to us and said, hey, do you want to be an Art Prize venue? You know, it's just like people just, do you want to keep doing these things? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. So then we get here and we do Art Prize 1. Art Prize 1, we do a giant mural on the wall. Audrey Ferris did it, who's also here. So congrats for there. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, and we started manipulating the space a little bit more, trying new things and building on what we had. And now it's just known to people as Dreamland because Dreamland was giant on the windows and we've ran with it, right? It's Dreamland, it's Wonderland, the sense of wonder, the theme of wonder, right? So right now people use it as a community space. This woman just asked if she could take photos of a ballerina that was in there and because she wanted to take them on a mural made by a local artist. So. It's just really about using the community to work together. Um, through that, obviously, we were in art space that got advice to not be in art space. So how do you create capital gain as an art space? And it's a big open space, so obviously we're gonna become an event space with weddings. Since I worked in food service for so long, it was really easy for me to just you know move that way. So for me, when we're talking about accessibility, like accessibility is everything for everybody. It's for literally everybody. So accessibility, people don't wanna rent tables, right? Okay, let's buy the tables. Let's figure out a way to store the tables. Let's make this so easy for somebody to have a wedding in here that it's out of sight, out of mind, and then I can do the arts. So for two years, that's what we did. I just did all the weddings and did all these things. You know, Oh, we need to add another bathroom because we need to do it for zoning compliancy? Great, we'll do it. You know. So there's a lot of things that went into it behind the scenes that nobody, including myself, would ever think would go into it. But now we have a beautiful wedding venue that's booked for almost all of 2020 that supports all the arts. So you can do it. But through that, now I'm getting to do things that I wanted to do. So education. So there's our education classes in there all the time. Um, we have workshops in there. There's just things for kids, adults, everything. We started... In my downtime last year, I uh, sat on the North Quarter SID board, which is Cheshire, Creston, and North Boundary, for all those who are so interested. But what it is, it's about like economic development. How are you using money from tax increment financing to do better things in your district? Buy trash cans, better bus stops, pick up things that shouldn't be on the street. Kids, make sure that they have helmets when they're riding their bikes, you know, that kind of stuff. So we kind of threw that, a couple of businesses and I, we decided to throw Best of Creston. Best of Creston was just getting the community to revamp back together. Um, so for two years, we did Best of Creston, and we won a lot of awards for Best of Creston. Lions and Rabbits won a lot of awards for just being community oriented, but it's because of the community. You know, there's so many people. We're showing over 115 artists right now, so it's a lot of people doing a lot of things, actively getting the word out about what we're doing. Fast forward, we have another baby. This is little Kieran over there. Kieran uh, is now a year old and almost a year old. And it was great. I was very sick with both of my pregnancies. So I was on IVs cur like pretty much the whole time for both of them. Um, so it was a lot of downtime, lots of computer time, lots of uh, IVs watching Wood TV8, seeing what is going on in the community, and not understanding why I don't know about any of it, right? Like, there's so many things, so many pockets of people, and you still feel like you have everything, and then you're like, I have no idea about this person, or this, or this, or this. So, always thinking and wondering, like, what is there? Why is there more? Why did I have a kid, and why did I stay in Grand Rapids? Why did I go to Kendall for our education? Why did I finish school? Why do I think Grand Valley is a great school for art school? Like, 
what are all these things, but it's all because of the experiences that we've had and that we're having. So through that, living and working in Creston, Creston does, Creston Neighborhood Association, their big event is the Neighborhood uh, Art Battle, Art Bash is what it's called now. So they brought us in as a new business, hey, you're an art gallery, do you have artists, do you wanna join us with this? They were working with a uh, resident who was on it for several years and she is now um, the executive director of placemaking for Downtown Grand Rapids, Inc. So she was at this meeting one time, I was really sick, I came to her and I was like, Sorry, I was throwing up in the parking lot, but I really wanted to meet you because I want to do these projects. And she's like, well, we have this really big project, but it's really big and you got to do it like now. And I was like, no, I promise you, like I have no jobs because I can't. And I'm like finally getting control of myself. Let me do this project. So she was like, okay, cool. So she said, can you get as many local artists as you can to come paint fish on this parking lot? We have a grant that's running out. Good morning, you woke up. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we have a grant. Uh, that's running out, we need to activate the space. Movies on Monroe is gonna move over here. Do you wanna do it? And I was like, duh. So she said, paint the shipping container. I said, like, okay. Then she goes, okay, now can you organize these artists? And I was like, okay. So we did these huge projects. I did this River for All project the year before with uh, students from the museum school. So I just really, am, whenever I do projects, I'm like, hey, who wants to do it? You know, kind of thing. Um, and then this is what happened. So this is, not the best photo, but there's 65 fish in there from local artists that was literally by word of mouth. So if you want to talk about like drive and people talking in Grand Rapids, people talk, right? So that was the start of it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, let's do something like that again. And then the Red American Women Tour came. So once again, it was Women's History Month in uh, March. And in October of last year, Kim came to me and said, do you think that we want you would do something on Women's History Month? I have this book that I bought for my niece. I really want to do it where, how can we do it with several artists? So it just became so many things. I wish that I picked Temple Grandin, but the author did. <laughs> but I have watched a documentary on her and she's incredible. But, so we got to do this book. Um, and there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So it was for 26 female identifying artists to come paint a mechanical box. Well, that's how it started. It became a little bit more than that, um, and it became, okay, let's make a walking tour. Let's talk about accessibility. Let's talk about the Arts Advisory Council Board. What, how are we going to present this? Whose mechanical boxes are we painting? Who's gonna take care of them when somebody graffitis on them, if somebody hits one by a car? You know, all these things that you don't think about. What happens if the city has to replace one because they're replacing the street lights? So, let's just say there were a lot of triumphs in the end of this project but we did get um, over 150 submissions for it, and it was statewide, or, yeah, the state of Michigan, female identifying artists, all of them were paid. Um, so each artist submitted a sketch to the gallery with why they wanted to participate in three of the people that they wanted to do and why. So we, it wasn't even that some artists were not good enough, it was just that somebody else picked them and I found them first. So we, but every woman that got to participate in this picked somebody that they did identify with, and I thought that was really important about this. So we now have a walking tour as well. Um, it starts down at this red box right here. This is at the corner of Pearl um, and Camp Ow, right by the JW Marriott. There's an app that you can download, and you can take the walking tour that is in Spanish and in English, um, narrated by two local people who work and live here. DJRI was very, very adamant in using female identifying businesses to partner with for this. So for the walking tour, Carolyn Cook is somebody who organizes walking tours. She is who did that. All the artists are female. Down to the caterers, the luncheons, the locations, everything was done by females. But it took seven months to get this project done. Um, and a lot of people don't understand how much work goes into it. Accessibility is the biggest Thing that I would take away from this that we didn't accomplish. So, um, but there's always room for growth and I wonder why, right? So in my current life now, we, we, this is actually the group of people that came to the luncheon that were artists that participated or the people that put it on. So as you can see, there's people from the Arts Advisory Council, people from Downtown Grand Rapids, Inc. I don't know if you guys know, but the ambassadors that are in the blue over there 
they are the people that clean the streets of downtown every single day. They have a small area, well, it's big, but they have an area of downtown that is financed to have them clean it up. And it's things like that that change things. So, you know, when I was asked to speak on Wonder, I was like, oh my God, Wonderland. That's our art price name, Dreamland. Wonder, 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 you know. I'm thinking, I'm wondering why, where the collaboration is with everything, why, why it takes collaboration to get things done. It's like a no-brainer. Everybody needs to collaborate on everything that they do. And when you're doing it, you're doing it to the best of your abilities. But you can spend like your entire life wondering, why did I do that? Where am I? Why am I? But the wonders that you should be doing is like wondering how you can propel yourself forward, how you can propel other people, because everybody's here. You know what I mean? Like you don't need to go somewhere else to find it. You just need to find it with the people that you're with and push your wonder to help their success as well. Um, the other thing that I would say that I take back from all of my projects is volunteering. Volunteering is huge. They're teaching, I mean, obviously teaching Hayden to volunteer is huge, but I didn't even think about bringing her to this. And my husband was like, why don't you go teach her to plant trees? She loved it, you know what I mean? When you're doing things like this, she got to meet Mayor Bliss for the second time, take a picture with her. Now she's all about wanting to be a mayor, you know, <laughs> wanting to be a vet or a mayor, who knows, I don't know. But I'm just saying it opens doors and opportunities. You wonder why people do things, it's because they are given opportunities by what they're doing. Um, now, Lions and Rabbits functions obviously as a full art space too. We curate for other venues, so if you're an artist looking for work, or work to be shown, you can always come to us. There's always calls that we do. Um, and there's always other things, like this is a perfect form of collaboration that I wanted to show, okay, so because this is at 106 Gallery, which is owned by Kelvin, or was owned by Kelvin at the time. But this is during a break it down, make it better, and this is between Dwelling Place, UICA, you know, there's so many people that are trying to do these things together, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Like the, the wheel's already there. You just need to find the collaboration and wonder who's gonna make you get there and what are you gonna do to make other people get there. So that's it. I didn't read any of my notes. P.S. <laughs> P.S. Yeah. So, I mean, organizing a project like this is way different than being an artist on a project like this. So organizing a project like this is contracts. Um, contracting with the city, right? You're contracting with the city. They have to apply as a city vendor. They need to know how to write an invoice. They need to be able to submit a proposal. I need to then be able to submit 27 proposals to the city to say, hey, uh, and one of the questions was there is someone did a women's rights fist and they didn't think it looked like a women's rights fest. Well, that's a question, you know, like that's an honest question, whether or not it was somebody interpreted it as something different. So, you know, you're working through everybody's beliefs, morality, ethical codes, uh, everything. Like, that's life. It doesn't matter if it's not supposed to be there, it's there. So, working through that and being able, like, I mean, there's, in this project, right, there's 27 artists. I would say there's seven leaders beneath me that led the other 20, you know what I mean? Like there's everybody is leading other people. There are things that other people can do better than me, like writing contracts. So I'm asking other people to help me read over my contracts, you know? So there are a lot of things that go into it. You just have to know that you're never gonna believe everything that the same, like somebody else is gonna believe no matter what. So just let it go. Like you need to let it go and just feel like a humble, better person. Because through, your, through what you're doing, we'll just show people that you can do it. Okay, does anyone else have any more questions? Of the red woman in front of us, or anything else? I have another one. I was call? wondering, okay, I have a question. <laughs> so I was wondering if, you know, there are other communities or even community leaders that you are inspired by, um, how they've been able to incorporate public art and, and the inverse of that, if since you know you've been so involved, if people are now seeking you out for your advice. Yeah. Okay. That's a good one. So, yeah. So as art leaders, 
Uh, UICA, I would say, all the way. Catherine Williams uh, is the programs coordinator for UICA, and she got me into uh, interested into doing like more mural work with students. So I did like just like a summer camp, teaching summer camp there. And that she was like, well, why aren't you doing it? If, like, if this is what you want to do, then why aren't like you can make it a job? If you want to make it a job, make it a job. You have a building. So um, for like as an art leader, I would say her uh, there. But as like business leadership, I would say East Town. Like I watched East. Town, I worked in East Town when it wasn't what East Town is. But I also see the problems that happened with what happened in East Town. And Crescent is exactly what East Town was. So you know, getting to see their leadership and see where they think, they now think things are, okay, maybe this is bordering the line of this isn't right, you know? I think being able to, it's already, like I said, you're not reinventing the wheel, you just need to learn how to do it better. So, like Crescent has been able to be that area, but I would say like public figures, Ruth Kelly, she's like a humble servant. She built bio retention islands with two broken feet and breast cancer, you know what I mean? Like learning people's real stories and why they really care is really why it's like what motivates me to keep moving forward and actually care if like somebody cuts a tree down for no reason. You know what I mean? It's just, it just, it's the stories behind why it's there is what matters, but. <laughs> hey Chris, do you want to do this? <laughs> uh, let's just say I'm taking like almost a whole month of August off. <laughs> no, I do, I'm like a chunks person, so I got to work in chunks, you know, like I got to get this done and then I got to go get this done and then someone's going to say, did you do this? And I'm like, no, but it's in my trunk, right? So I do everything like that. I have schedules, you know, with babysitters, but I need to be flexible. You need to be flexible. We have a sick child right now, so it's like, you know, you, my job lets me do what I want. I can bring my kids to meetings. There's certain meetings I don't, but there's other ones I intentionally do because I say, hey, yeah, you are wasting my time. Or these are my kids and I love my kids and I want them to be around this. You know, being able to, what do you live for? Do you live for your job or do you live for your family? Do you live for both? Because you can live for both. And it's whether what you're doing in your work is making them better people. Like I know that my job makes them better people, or will. I know that Hayden getting to plant trees and pick up garbage in Roosevelt Parks, where she knows nothing about Roosevelt Parks, will make her change something. You know, so uh, no real advice. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. White claw. <laughs> White claw. <laughs> I mean, it is tough because they're great, but Yuri, Yuri, uh, which is odd because Yuri is a vinyl wrap, and vinyl wrap was something that the city was really asking for, is that everybody comes and does a vinyl wrap. I was like, well, why wouldn't you? It'd be so much easier to install, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody from downtown Grand Rapids Inc. said, because there's no performance, nobody's on the streets talking about the project. And I was like, oh, you're totally right. Uh, the skill level of the artist, she's an emerging artist who's uh, she just graduated from Kendall at 30 with two kids, and she's like, this is my path, this is how I'm gonna make it, Kendall, are you gonna help me do it? Okay, cool. So I like watch her, and I watch her success from what she's made, and I didn't know her before this project either. So that is probably my favorite one. Um, I would say Queen Bessie is really good too. Queen Bessie's really good. She's an illustration major at Kendall too, so. Let's give Hannah another round of applause.